Johannes. I work on OpenJK, so I'm probably the only Java person in the room, but hey. If you have any Java questions, don't ask me them. I usually work with people. Anyway, um, let's start. I'll be talking about uh, writing text programs. Uh, we saw it before that you can write EPF programs in Rust and use some um, Python around it. Well, let's see. Um, so when you look at the EPPF feature system, you quite clearly see that there is a language mapping that we all use, especially when you're not like in the kernel world, but when we're in the Xbox world and it's Java. Um, and that's what I'm working on. Um, and so I thought, hey, uh, why not? To the, to the EB, to the EBPF ecosystem, um, and the question that I get asked is why? Uh, so people are like, oh, you're crazy, I named you first of all for that yes, in this room, or oh, I thought it was a joke. Um, so I show you um, why it's not a joke, um, why it's, it's a good idea to do this. Um, and first and foremost, it's like the um, open source spirit. So, um, it's all open source, we can try it out and maybe learn from the mistakes and take the ideas to other languages. Um, to, to quote Pepe, EBPF is a good technology, it's like putting Java in Android. Now let's do this. Um, uh, my library is the whole EBPF library, it's still, uh, it's still a prototype, you can find it on GitHub online, um, play with it, find out. Um, um, so how we got started, um, pretty basic, it was of people at conferences last year, and I think maybe I started it, and then um, I started with just uh, taking web based C Python and then transforming it into uh, using this API to essentially AI guide to translate it to Java. So if you have seen in this example of Chris Balthopole written in Python, I then just Write the curl on Java code, which was possible with the new Java features of the AP21 that came a couple of months ago, which is pretty decent. The only problem is, uh, and you can then write uh, programs like these, so um, you can put in your string, you can have all the libbcc, any of the libbcc functions that you, you know if you ever tried libbcc, um, and have like the attach here. Um, the other problem is, is that yes comes and whoever uses it is it's not a previous library to get a recently um, new version of on the current system, so many problems. Also writing uh, being based on like a Pythonic library also makes more problems itself. So I have to rewrite everything from still from some compile magic. So um, that's Pretty simple example of a project. So essentially, what we told at the beginning, we told um, about the license of the EBPF program and the program name. And you can also implement interfaces. So for those of you Java, this is just basic Java code here. We implement, for example, the system Chromebox interface and it gives you methods like the end method that implements the the K entry hook. In the kernel, um, and it's called whenever the open ed compile is called, it is parameters, and uh, then you also have things then run in kernel, and you have the user land part, that's run in user land in Java. So the kernel part essentially compiles down to the C, and then Java, I'll show you in a minute how it works, um, and you can write Java code um, that is kind of executed in the kernel, and you can use your common tooling that you have with all your refactoring going or something. And you work in Java, and it's also readable for um, for, for people um, that are not like experts in Rust or languages because it's directly embedded in the language that many people know. So it's just the same, it prints the trick block, and then we have a user end code that essentially uh, loads the program and the cool thing is the program is compiled at Java compile time, you attach it and just pretty basic Java, but um, it allows you to, to do much more. So, for example, what you can also do, you can implement the interface executable to get the XDP of the interface. For example, here we, we can see um, 
and we're implementing this, we can use global variables that we can both use in Java and in our eBPF Java version with the same API, which is pretty cool as you see here. So we can use count of that um, here in the eBPF part, but you can find this you can also use it in Java port in the same way. Um, or you can write simply functions that are then um, written. Um, what they do here is use the Java code to pre-process it to generate code for all the stuff. And then I take the syntax tree, like this, annotate it as a syntax tree, and compile it down like you would with the PDF, but also many other languages do. Um, and so this code is then translated essentially into this code, which is almost pretty much the same code. This video, the, the first one is like, in a Java syntax and it's valid Java and the other part is valid E. Um, this makes it possible to, to integrate the EPPF programs directly with Java. So now the question is how do we model different language constructs of E? Um, so we will take here a spot where we have a spot with a PID field and a PID string. Um, and we can interpret later on how it's modeled is that I will try to turn it as if I don't ask this question now. Uh, so you like if you just do this abstract syntax tree by working in Java and translate it to C, yeah. and then what? Then the C code is just compiled to. Um, and the cool thing is the C code is then just compiled to EBPF bytecode using LVM using Clang, and then this is then stored in a Java program, and whenever you load it. This program is the eBPF bytecode is then loaded into the Linux kernel using the libbpf. Um, so it's essentially a way to not have to write B code in a string. Just write it into. So the when you compile the Java, you extract this pieces that will be yes. a program. Yes. Like you see, then you compile C to uh, yes. just using regular Clang and touch somewhere this object into the Java and then like this one. Yeah. So we have here, you, you, so as you see here, we have the kernel part that's like, that's never run in Java really. Um, that's compiled down to C, so in this example it's the end of math. It's annotated in the system call hooks interface, so um, my compiler knows, oh, this is, it should be run in, in the kernel. And then you have the user lab part that's actually run as Java, um, but it looks kind of similar and you could use the system same methods actually in, in both, but of course it's a restricted version of Java. Very restricted. No inheritance, no classes. Okay, so do you know restricted Python? It's really similar to I, R Python. I know, I know, I know. Uh, I also know Python, which is probably also similar. Um, yes, and it's kind of similar in idea wise, I'm not talking for it, but it's this focus, laser focus on eBPF on the use case. So yeah, maybe we can extend the light to something like this, but it's really focused on what I need to run eBPF stuff, and I'll show you later what you can do. Okay. Hope this makes some sense. Uh, so I don't understand, what's the idea of writing it in Java in the first place? And um, it was can. Um, <laughs> uh, can't you just write that in C? I can show you in a minute. I can show you in a minute. I'm not a BPF person, but Johannes showed me this project before, so I see all those questions, right? And first question I would have to Alex say, if you had, let's um, put aside the, the motivation, the use case, etc. but if you had to, uh, to, to do this exercise, right, to write, uh, um, yeah, but with Java syntax, would you uh, direct it to the bytecode, or the, do you appreciate the convenience of having C as an intermediate uh, step, or you think, uh, well, okay, that was like a cheap thing to do, but maybe if you want to do it for real, go direct to the bytecode, or it depends. Okay, and, and then. Uh, It, it, it makes, so, so to answer the question, it makes 
because he makes it far more easier by easier because they don't have to deal with generating the yeah, type format and generating the bytecode and doing the optimizations that Clang happily does for me. To be honest, he is just the only wrapper around assembly anyway. I wanted to address the why it's in the slides, in the in upcoming yeah. slides, but um, in my employer, um, we have uh, um, a stuff that we are uh, obliged to run on our machines. They call, they call the Velociraptor. It's called the sensor that kind of watch what you do. And it's the BTF and it's practically go. And uh, we wanted to make patches to it, so the developer we had to find to get to, to, to know about. But if you have uh, um, uh, an environment where you can do the entire thing in one language, it kind of lowers the barrier, the psychology, you see what I mean? And um, the tooling, uh, the tooling that is available for Java, they are already comfortable. It's a matter of uh, ergonomics, it's smart. You're writing uh, BPF with Java syntax, you may not like it, but it's not, uh, um, I think it, it has this place. I mean, I, I, I'm not, you know what I mean? And, and the main problem that you have when you're writing it in C is that you define your thought in C and then you define it in your host language, for example, Java. And you have mismatches, and that's not great. Here, essentially, you can start, you can use the swag in Java, of course, and you get this. And you, when you have a PPF map, you get this event out, or, or the ring buffer, you get this event out, and you can use it both from Java and from eBPF at the same time, which is pretty decent because you don't have any mismatches between oh, this string is here like 256 bytes long, but no, in my C code, it's 200 bytes long. You get so many verifier errors that are pretty, pretty hard to solve. Um, and this just makes it easier because you have one source of truth. To, to continue, um, you can also define unions the same way. And it's just because I, I don't care about the Java semantics here, kind of thing. Uh, usually, Java is like, it's, I don't know, it's going to see the purpose, but here it is. It's the semantics slightly I don't see the purpose because the semantics is slightly modified, but you have all the benefits that Giovanni told you, like with the editor support and everything, because you still have you, you can still write it in your in your Java EDE. So code that you can also document and you can also still have code that runs in both. Sure, but you still need someone who roughly knows what a pointer and well, Things for the demo destruct is and so on, right? So you're not really dealing with just Java. No, um, I think uh, I'm, I'm still, and it's, it's currently that's the point where the project is, but I hope in the future that it can alleviate these things. But that's why the project currently is because it's still a work in process. For example, this, uh, this Java generate, this C code generation, I finished it two, one and a half months ago. So uh, that just shows the current point. But I'm surely want to get rid of pointers where possible. Um, it's just a lot of work. So um, you see here is where, where it can get closer to Java. <laughs> and so, yeah, pointers, we can just replace them. Oh, that works fine. And the cool thing is also the type checks. So if the program here type checks, you can also type checks and see. So you get many warnings of your IDE, and they usually help. Um, you can, but the, and the cool thing here is it's mostly like a way to template C, so we, we annotate our functions only with some templates and define this then. We have maps, of course, um, and we can define the hash maps and can use them both in PPF and in Java. For example, here we can define a string with a key, um, and then we can use, because the get semantics is different in, in Java and EBPF, we use the, the BPF get method in, in Java. In, in, the EVPF Java of the put method has the same semantics as both. So we can use both uh, in Java and in EVPF. And that makes it easier because we're using the same map, it has the same sizes and everything. Um, and then um, how, how it works under the hood is that because we have VM Linux, we need to deal with it because you saw before you, we have the XCP struct. We, we have to somehow, somehow be able to use it. So what I essentially do, I take Pages combine them with the VM Linux BTF and throw them in my uh, throw them in my tool and then get out the system call hooks and other interfaces. Um, I take the VM Linux BTF and generate of all types of finding then of all functions that generate our representations of it 
and lists of around 30,000 Java classes ultimately do, and then we combine like the BPF, um, the VM Linux BPF with the BPF helper documentation and with like the BPF helper, uh, the BPF helper class with all the helpers functions. And then I provide a BPF J class where I have like easier usable functions. Um, yeah. And what we do here essentially we take this, this BTF class and um, this is based on the product here, the uh, class for the Ethernet header. We then turn it into Java code uh, that represents this. Um, this makes it easy because we then can use it in our BPF code. And if you want to. So you say you have uh, the other side of the parser, so on one, so you can do the AST. Uh, from Java to C, and then you do something similar from C to Java. That's yeah. also your own C to Java. Yeah, yeah. So, so you can you can check in any BPF type, any BTF type, and it can generate you equivalent Java code, um, which I need to use, which I need to do because uh, when I write something like relate to XPP, I need access to all the things like Ethernet header and other classes, and so you can just use this in your eBPF Java code. That's all generated. That that's pretty useful. Um, if there was a question like that, there, there, there are of course similar things done both with JavaScript and C. Of course, there they have many other people who have done this for for different projects. But this here is focused um, on on the EPPF use case. Um, and yeah, this allows us to set to write code like this, where we have an XCP handle method which we can implement and we get as an argument of XCP MD. And the pointer is we can put some pointer subjects and everything, and so we can ask the pointer, um, uh, we can ask you for its value and everything. And so it works good enough. I even have support for X enum, so XCP acting as an enum, um, and can generate this on the BP. Um, so what can we do? We can do quite a lot. Um, for example, um, even with this prototype, we can write a simple firewall that uh, works with XCP. And the cool thing is with Java um, that we can use existing Java libraries. So it's quite easy to integrate this into the Java, Java ecosystem. And one of these is the Spring Boot of the web server in the ecosystem, which is pretty nice. For example, we can easily write a web application, in this case, firewall control interface where we can set rules. And when we take these rules, they get the JSON there directly from the web interface. This is then serialized in our user land code by Spring Boot and um, directly turned out in, turned into Java objects. And we can then pass them directly into the PPF map into Kernel land. In this case, it might not be the best idea, but um, it, it shows you how to easily take data from, from somewhere else and push it into Kernel, um, which is pretty useful, especially because the Java ecosystem is, is pretty large in this area. Many people use it. Um, and this opens um, it also up to other people because when, when people see the EPPF, they're like, oh, that's like a black box that they can't understand. But when you show them, oh, it's simple schemas that they can understand and they, they can play around with, it's pretty nice because they now see, oh, um, it's not a magic, it's not something magic, but it's just an extension of what I can write in the language that I already know. So this, um, so this library is mostly for educational purposes. Um, maybe I find some use cases afterwards, but it's mostly uh, to, to learn about and to teach people about eBPF because I think it's growing ever more. And you can not only do the firewalls with it, but um, in a recent talk, um, uh, it, 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 a couple of weeks old, um, I worked on adding GEDEX support. So essentially, you can implement a scheduler interface and implement a few methods and create a Linux scheduler um, in Java um, in a similar way as we probably saw with the XCP hook. So it, it's like 25 lines of Code. It's not much to implement a FIFO scheduler, only functional that you can call it, and then you run it by a CPU Java jar, and then you're done, you have a FIFO scheduler on the system. And the funny thing is, I then, of course, benchmarked it because I'm not even on JP, I'm interested in the yeah, Java benchmark, so I run it with a typical Java benchmark, and it was faster than the existing Linux scheduler. 
interesting, of course, it's the, the reason is because it was a benchmark where only looked at the throughput and not on latencies. So of course, uh, there might be issues, but I find it interesting that we can easily write it in, in like couple of lines of code like schedulers that are, that are already useful for some use cases um, and um, how it really is essentially as before, as I said before, parts of the Java code, like all of implementations of the methods of this Codex interface um, are then compiled to C and used in the script ops for ScaleX. And this was compiled into bytecode and then loaded into the kernel and the test for ScaleX. And I was huge, hopefully in a couple of weeks, I, I tried to use it to make my own scheduler orchestra where you can play music using the scheduler. Um, to showcase the build here in UPS and ScaleX. So I think it's, as I said, it's an, edu an educational tool where we can broaden the scope because currently um, only people that know like C look at this. But now people, even with normal Java background, can, can look at this. And even your managers can look at this and be like, I, I kind of understand these small examples if they aren't proficient with this. If you want to know more on writing now since since January this year, um, almost every two weeks of blog post on this topic is so you see the progress here. Um, you find it on on mostly notes with the EO and the record. You find the project um, at uh, on, on GitHub. It's open source project. Yeah, I think so. My team and Dylan are helping me with this. Uh, What's my talk now? Anyone, any other questions? I want to add a remark. Um, again, Johannes showed me uh, some of this material uh, before when he said that he uh, uh, wrote um, a minimal scheduler in Java, which was uh, comparable, if not faster, than the, the regular Linux scheduler. He was not joking. And the catch is that. Uh, uh, sometimes you don't need a sophisticated scheduler if you have enough CPU. And so we had the, uh, this uh, benchmark that is called the Renaissance, but it runs as many threads as you have CPU. And so you just place uh, one thread in each CPU. And that was the type of scheduler. It just uh, starts the app and never stop it, right? And the complex uh, scheduler that is in Linux um, can do better than that because it's a very simple case. But it's kind of funny that you have this kind of low hanging fruit. And you, you, and so it was not an understatement. It was faster, simply because it was a CPU bound uh, benchmark that, that uh, you start it and, and just leave it there. So um, it's, it's kind of cool, actually. So, uh, next question. So there are two parts. One is like a Java program which can load the So essentially how it works on the hood is that you take that they take the C code, compile it to EBPF bytecode and then store it in a string in the Java program and then just use then it just use my own bindings for the EPF um, to load it then into common just using the EPF custom load methods or something. Okay, the source code is very cool. Your source code, just like this, your source code, load the um, kernel client with the same Java source file. I don't call it libc. I don't call it libc because I'm pre-compiling, and that's really important for me. I'm pre-compiling because libc can be a so many problems, yeah. um, and it's a for good reason. Libc can be so many problems, but um, I switch to really compiling the C code at compile time of the Java program. So in the Java bytecode, in the end, we have a string that contains um, all the EPF bytecode, and this is then loaded on. So when you run this, you don't need uh, an LLVM on your system. So you can far easier distribute it. That's really cool. I wanted to ask you if there is any reason to use BCC instead of your project. If we take aside all the complexity about program attachment. No. Uh, 
you can pretty see you still have to write the code in a string and this has so many problems. You don't get proper syntax highlighting support. In some ADEs might be true, but you don't get any type checking usually. Um, you still have to write you still have to, to rely on the magic that LeapCC does with all the spreads. You have no type checking and write whole code related. When I write BCC, if I have a, a program that is longer than a screen of code, you're having syntax and having is kind of overthrowing. And, and LeapCC is a small thing. Topic. It makes all the difference. LeapCC is not supported anymore, but yeah, it would be cool to have something similar for but you know, based on Python and maybe the PPF for Python, but nobody wants it. I thought it for Java. Yeah, so maybe you could stop saying this is for educational purposes. If you can do better than what we all oh, yeah, but, but I, I don't want anyone to use protection please now. So it's, yeah, but it's because it's incomplete, not because it's... Uh, yes. Yeah. And, it, yes, it doesn't have any, any inherent problems. Um, of course, what you can't do, you can't sadly write a static land scheduler that runs in user land because Java uses segmentation for, for almost everything. So uh, there are problems, but you can write basic scheduler. Uh, I thought it also the SAF simple for it and will pop. So <coughs> do you have like any, so probably not, but do you have like plans to translate it to uh, arena style pointers? Why I'm asking uh, is so that you can make it much bigger than when people realize, meaning that since it's all in Java and you do like just walk the app or something in the street, etc., you can make it, you can make the use of Arena there right away, and because again you translate it to C, you can inject all of this, uh, uh, may go to constructs in there, and you will be able to do what uh, Doom folds like did in the morning, you can like implement the whole like image processing, like completely in Java, with whatever things you look like JPEG. Like you can write JPEG processing in Java, and because you do in this translation to see, you translate it with Arena pointers and with my go to, and it will just work. And it will like perform just like a C code. I think that will be like double cool. And since you're doing it all, all under the hood, people like people not familiar with Arena, they know how to do in C, and for them it's already like mental block, because they know this is how I write program in C, I'm using standard maps, and the limited by uh, baggage that we've created with the C language, with Java you're starting fresh, so if you like focus on this like Arena style, it will look a lot more expressive than C. Yeah. Yeah, like BPF Arena is a new map type. <coughs> All the pointers are in there, the like, runtime check, so you can implement any algorithm there. Yeah. You can implement hash table, you can I implement JPEG, you can implement regex, anything you like. I think the main problem here is that Java is inherently garbage collected, so I, I still, I want it just I want to merge to some and want to get to semantics closer to Java. Also, have some basic inheritance in the future, so basic classes. But I'll never fully have Java, but I want to come as close as possible because I never want to implement a garbage collector into EPF. Because no, 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 yeah, I'm not suggesting like any garbage collector. I'm only thinking from like the loop. Like, oh, yeah. I don't know what to do with loops now. Is that this way you can do like full like loops without any extra? Uh, oh, you can. Oh, yeah, so I didn't show it, but you can already do like loops and everything. So I have basic support for loops. Um, you can like loops for directly. Yes, yeah, like four. Yeah. Four. I'm saying you can do four plus little bit of a twist, and if all pointers inside are not the traditional like global data that I think you're already doing, but this pointers in here, then any algorithm will just work. I looked into this, um, it's pretty cool, but I just haven't had the time to finish this, so yeah, yeah, yeah. I think you can, uh, if you have any other ideas, please just write me an email, uh, you find the email address uh, on my blog post page. Um, I'm really looking forward to extending this and to also add more text to the verify that's later directly into my Java Compile plugin, so I catch bugs before they happen in the verifier, so um, please 
totally not as expressive as I, as I like to do. I like to have it, but it's already able to, to express lots of, lots of things. And if, you know, working on this, um, and I hope in the future when I came next year to this conference, um, I, I show you some, some more stuff. Thank you, Giovanni. Yeah, so, so if, if anyone wants to like help me working on this, um, I, I'm, I'm happy. It's, it's a one-man project on, on Friday on Friday evening. So, um, yeah. it's public. It's all public. So as I said, if you have the QR code, I wrote like 16 blog posts on this topic. So you see the whole post from the start, from like my LibPCC days to the is to the to the days when I taught LibPCC. So. You can find all the blog posts here. Um, you can follow the progress to use a GitHub repository where you find find all the code, but you also find like the firewall code, the scheduler code, just look around, have fun with it, and learn some Java. Uh, so for it months now, it's sort of like, uh, so it was in, in February where someone here in the room told me that I was crazy buying it. I didn't. <laughs> And yeah, yeah, it was crazy. But no, yeah, so I'm so essentially I'm wearing like every Friday. Um, I'm happy to have a lot of views and I work too many weekends. Admit on it, so it's essentially eight months of one day week, so it's probably like too much. But I think I'm coming out to the to the point where I can write pretty cool projects, and I want to do more with FedEx and also. A bit more into the travel world because for here I, I, I I'm speaking at Java conferences and they t when you tell them about that, about GBPF they're like hey, this is the tool that I get from what I'm not. But now I'm totally at major Java conference telling them like that's how you write your own examples. I'm the content a similar talk that I gave here. I also give a Java conference and they are pretty interested in this because they now see oh GBPF is not. It's an interesting tool that we can try to use. And even if they don't use my library, they're interested in it, they see what it can do, they understand it, and then it's like it's like we, we hook them, like, oh, you can write simple demos with Java, and then they, they get deeper into and learn how to use, for example, the Rust APIs. So if I would do anything in production, I probably would use the, the Rust APIs and all Go libraries, but it helps us to drum people in. Um, and I'm looking forward to doing this. Um, for the next couple of weeks too, and also for next year to tell people about how cool it is and maybe spread the word so uh, next year many more people want to do EPF and come.